Ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the organizers, I would like to welcome all of you to the Hong Kong Cambodia Partnership Webinar. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Vinci, and it gives me great pleasure to be your MC today. The webinar today is organized by the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau of the Government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region and the Consulate General of the Kingdom of Cambodia and Hong Kong. It is also our privilege to also have the following parties co-organizing the event. They are the Ministry of Commerce in, of Cambodia, Commercial Center of Cambodia in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office in Bangkok, and the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, and also the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce Hong Kong. Today's event is also supported by the Council for the Development of Cambodia. Before we get started, I would like to remind participants of the following points. First, this webinar will be conducted in English and last for around 1 hour and 25 minutes. No simultaneous translation will be provided. All microphones and videos for the audience will be muted at all times. The chat function will also be disabled throughout the webinar. Now, I would like to introduce today's program. We will start with the welcome remarks by Mr. Edward Yao, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. This will then be followed by the responding remarks by His Excellency Mr. Pik Rathi, Secretary of State, Ministry of Commerce of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Next, we will have three thematic sharing sections. We are delighted to have leading figures from both Hong Kong and Cambodia across different industries, including the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce, the Law Society of Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Trade Development Council, and the Council for the Development of Cambodia, etc. After the thematic sharing sections, we will have a panel discussion for Secretary Yao and the speakers to share their further insights on how Hong Kong and Cambodia may partner together during and after the pandemic to capture new business opportunities. Lastly, we will invite Secretary Yao and Mr. Sun Sapal, Director of Public Relations and Promotion of Private Investment, Council for the Development of Cambodia to deliver the closing remarks. Without further ado, may we now first invite Mr. Edward Yao, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, to address the audience. Secretary Yao, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, Honorable Secretary, distinguished speakers, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so happy to be with you this afternoon to uh, join together in this Hong Kong-Cambodia partnership conference. Although we cannot meet physically face to face, but still, I think through this webinar meeting, I hope that all participants could uh, have a better grasp of the opportunity ahead of us under the Hong Kong-Cambodia partnership. I can still remember uh, very clearly that back in early 2018, when I had the privilege of leading a 48-member delegation visiting uh, Cambodia uh, in this new term of government. The reason we picked Cambodia was very simple, that within the ASEAN's um, countries and economies, Cambodia has been one of the areas that we identify as a high growth area. Because well, there is tremendous opportunity that at that time we were seeing, including your high growth uh, driven by FDI, including your very open and welcoming economy, uh, allowing free flow of capital, and also the very deep and wide people-to-people -people knowledge, particularly among business sector in our respective economy. I think the same remain unchanged despite uh, COVID-19 uh, hitting all of us around the world. But I think the very major fundamentals that support Hong Kong-Cambodia partnership is in fact the, the increasingly uh, systemic uh, strength between the two economies. Now you being uh, a member of ASEAN, which has entered into a free trade agreement with Hong Kong uh, three years ago, have in fact provided the greatest certainty and stability for business uh, community to interact and to sort of strengthen the economic ties. Uh, we are witnessing a, a steady growth of trade between Hong Kong and ASEAN as a whole after the signing of the free trade agreement, which is increasingly important at a time when the whole world seems to be sort of backpedaling on uh, on free trade. But I think Cambodia and Hong Kong are both staunch supporters of free trade and open economy, whereby we see the advantage of allowing people, money and market to be open to each other. 
Now, I'm particularly impressed with the uh, very heavy investment that Cambodia has put into your infrastructure, uh, which is investing for future and for your own community. But at the same time, I think it also opened up a, a lot of opportunity for professional services where Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong team can offer. This includes a wide range of uh, uh, services from financing, insurance, infrastructural development, construction, and also to a special area like mediation, arbitration, uh, or very special area like the development of Smart City Initiative, which is uh, an area that Hong Kong is uh, uh, sort of uh, triggering uh, in a very uh, uh, rapid rate of development. Now, on the, on the Hong Kong side, I think uh, despite COVID and also uh, a lot of uh, uh, geopolitical tension. Hong Kong has in fact fared much better than one would have expected. We have recently released the figures uh, of GDP growth in the third quarter, which is about 5%. For the entire year of 2021, we are coming to at least above 6% GDP growth, which is a remarkable growth for a developed economy like Hong Kong. Unemployment rate has come down from the peak of 70.2% down to 4.5%. But most importantly, we are seeing that, well, in fact, more companies are retaining in Hong Kong than before. Uh, the 9,049 foreign companies using Hong Kong as a headquarters or regional offices remain a record. Plus the fact that, well, startup industry is booming. We have uh, over 10% uh, growth in the uh, strength of startup uh, business in Hong Kong. All this point to uh, the resilience of Hong Kong despite the pandemic. And at the same time, I think Hong Kong offered the best uh, sort of a destination for foreign and, uh, direct investment, very much in the same way as Cambodia offer to the world. Uh, we know that Hong Kong uh, is uh, the second largest uh, uh, source of uh, foreign direct investment to your country. But at the same time, I think we are, both, we are both very strong traders. Uh, almost 10 percent of your trade with mainland of China actually coming through Hong Kong. Now, all these provide a very important backdrop that we are closer than ever uh, in terms of trade investment, and also increasingly in talent. I recall in our, in our last visit to your country in 2018, a lot of attention also focusing not just on the traditional manufacturing supply chain management or enhancing a manufacturing base, tapping on the huge resources available in your country. But increasingly, there are more attention on how Hong Kong can contribute in this special relations by sort of bringing in, uh, for instance, a smart city initiative which I believe a lot of developing countries, including Cambodia, would be eager to open up the market or invite services to go into there. So I believe well, these are the attributes that, well, we are both a, a very dynamic and also sort of a, a economies offering multiple opportunities to each other. We are also very uh, strong uh, advocates of free trade, where we see no boundary or barrier should uh, sort of affect the free trade. And we believe that, well, by opening up more, then we can trade better. And at the end of the day, trade investment are very often the economic solution at the toughest time when we were sort of struggling with the pandemic. So um, I, I take this opportunity to thank all the organizers joining, uh, making this uh, conference come true. And all, also, I take this opportunity to thank the Cambodian government for all the time supporting Hong Kong and building up this partnership. I recall that, well, not long ago in September, uh, your Minister of Commerce, uh, Minister Pan, also taken part in the Belt and Road Summit that Hong Kong holds for the sixth times. And I think that offers a very important sort of forum on an annual basis for business community, economic leaders, and government officials to sort of meet with each other uh, on ideas, on potential, and market development. So I take this uh, uh, seminar today as a continuation of the good view, good effort, and also the tremendous opportunity that we are seeing in this uh, frontier. So I believe Hong Kong can offer a lot for Cambodian sort of uh, trade and business into our part of the region and vice versa for our trade into the ASEAN through Cambodia. So with all these remarks, uh, I look forward to hearing our distinguished speakers sharing their views uh, on how to strengthen this partnership. And coming to the end of the seminar, I'll come back to um, a round of the session and perhaps uh, pick up a few points that we can all sort of further discuss as a basis for taking our journey forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Yao. His Excellency, Mr. Pikrati, Secretary of State, 
Ministry of Commerce of the Kingdom of Cambodia will now deliver his responding remarks from Cambodia. Secretary Pekrati, please. Excellency Edward Yao, Secretary of Commerce and Economic Development of Hong Kong Special Economic Region. Mrs. Pek Putisab Bopir Neki, Consul, Consul General of Cambodia to Hong Kong. Mr. Sosa Paul, Director of Public Relations and Promotion of Private Sector, Council for the De Development of Cambodia. Distinguished speakers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, allow me to express my profound appreciation to SNC Edward Jiao for your opening remarks with insightful messages. Taking this opportunity on behalf of His Excellency Pan Sorasak, Minister of Commerce of Cambodia, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region for the great efforts in organizing this webinar conference with excellent arrangement despite the COVID-19 pandemic. With this, I would like to also welcome, welcome the business community in our region to this webinar. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by sharing with you the updates on Cambodia's COVID-19 vaccination program campaign as part of the nation's ongoing economic recovery efforts. As of today, we have vaccinated 86% of the total uh, 16 million Cambodian population, in which Cambodia has reached 100% of targeted adults aged 18 upwards. 98% of targeted adolescents aged 12 to under 18, and 101% of targeted children aged 6 to under 12. From yesterday, Cambodia has started to vaccinate children at the age of 5 years old too. Meanwhile, the Royal Government of Cambodia has decided to launch a booster dose of COVID-19 vaccines campaign to fight the virus. And 2 million people were given booster shots already. Yesterday, some back Prime Minister Hun Sen has declared that the full reopening of the country in all areas and living with COVID-19 in a new way of life has started. During this critical period, Cambodia stands ready to join hands with private sectors in fighting against the COVID-19 by ensuring that the cross-border trade will not get disrupted by the potential COVID-19 restriction measures, especially Cambodia committed to keep market open for smooth flows of essential goods, input materials, foodstuff, pharma pharmaceutical products, and medical supply. Essences, ladies and gentlemen, as we have been aware, the COVID-19 crisis has adverse impacts on economies in the region, including Cambodia. Until today, the global social, social economic situation remains highly unpredictable as a result of COVID-19 extension. In this point, the Royal Government of Cambodia has also been adopting three key strategies in the 2021-2023 to plan to restore the high growth to the economy, namely revival, reform, building resilience. This aim aim to bring back the growth to the economy with an emphasis on safety, impact management, stabilization of viable business, 
as well as to improving the measures such as trade and investment facilitation, business promotion, digitalization in economic system, and also enhancing preparedness and response capacity in the event of future uh, epidemic or similar uh, public emergencies. Cambodia and Hong Kong has always maintained close relations, including economic and trade ties. According to the Council for the Development of Cambodia, Hong Kong is one of the major sources of FBIs in Cambodia, as the uh, uh, state uh, said uh, early that uh, Hong Kong is the second uh, largest uh, FBI investors in Cambodia. Thank you so much. Uh, at the same time, bilateral trade with you between Cambodia and Hong Kong reached 1.1 billion US dollar in 2020, with an increase of 9% uh, to the year before. Cambodia major export product to Hong Kong are poor skin, tan or dress, electrical transformers, static converters, electric motor machinery, hard and accessory, cereal and rice. Cambodia's major import from Hong Kong are knitted fabric, plastics, man-made staple fiber, special woven fabric, toothed uh, textile fabric, lace paper and paperboard. Agencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to share with you some of our domestic uh, initiative to facilitate and promote business and investment. We have domestically implemented a number of reforms in order to promote and facilitate trade, investment, and business. For instance, we have developed and operate, operate a number of automated platforms, including online business registration, online tax payment system, intellectual, intellectual property filing system, digi digital platform for issuance of certificate of origin, qualified investment project registration and supplier data, database for certain sustainability dimension. In another reform in the financial sector, the National Bank of Cambodia and the Central Bank of China agree on trading uh, of the Khmerian currency in the interbank market of uh, Guangxi province and both currency, Khmer Real and Chinese Yuan, are permitted to be used for trade and investment between Cambodia and China since 2017. In addition, payment methods through Alipay, WeChat Pay, and so on, are also permitted to operate and facilitate payment in Cambodia, catering to Chinese and other tourists alike. In 2020, Cambodia has also launched an all-in-one mobile payment and banking app called Baco that combines e-wallets, mobile payments, online banking, and financial application within one easy-to-use interface for any preferred bank account. Cambodia has always been a good location for business and investment in terms of market access under the, its foreign trade regime. As you may already know, Cambodia has received for many years duty-free GSP from many developed and developing countries like EU, uh, program, uh, the GSP is called EBA or Everything But Arm from US, from Canada, China, Republic of Korea, India, Turkey, and so on. Cambodia became WTO member in 2004, 
So products produced in Cambodia can be exported on MFN tariffs to other 163 WTO members. Furthermore, Cambodia has joined and signed several regional free trade agreements, especially ASEAN internal agreement for goods, service, and investment, and ASEAN plus one free trade agreement, such as uh, ASEAN China, ASEAN Hong Kong, ASEAN India, ASEAN Australia New Zealand, ASEAN Japan, ASEAN uh, Republic of Korea, and the recently signed OSAP agreement. With the implementation uh, of OSAP agreement on the 1st January next year, the potential to expand and strengthen ASEAN-China economic and trade relation is unlimited, since this agreement represents one third of the global GDP, 30% of the world population. This mega trade agreement is modern, comprehensive, and high quality. More importantly, it will help reduce trade costs for business and further integrate ASEAN into global supply chain for electronic vehicles, textile, and garment. In addition, Cambodia has just signed the free uh, signed the bilateral trade, uh, trade agreement with China and Republic of uh, Korea, in which market access is better than those under ASEAN China and ASEAN Korea FTA. Besides this, the business community can realize and maximize the benefit of the free trade agreement and investment agreement between ASEAN and Hong Kong, to which Cambodia is also party. This agreement laid down a very strong foundation for business from both sides to consider expanding trade, investment, and professional services, as well as to enhance collaboration between the two parties and to explore opportunity for business and investment partnership after the COVID-19 pandemic. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I would like to share some key takeaway, perhaps as a way forward to further strengthen Cambodia-Hong Kong partnership and cooperation in the post-COVID-19 pandemic. On trade and investment, Cambodia and Hong Kong need to prioritize economic cooperation and trade for the purpose of accelerating regional economic recovery for keeping our market open, strengthening connectivity, stimulating production capacity and supply chain linkage, enhance, enhancing investment facilitation and jointly conducting investment promotion activity. With regard to financial connectivity, firstly, digital finance cooperation mechanism should be established to promote the development of digital finance, implement cooperation that complement each other strength and take innovative and pragmatic promotion of the development of digital economy as the current economy. Secondly, the focus should be also on investment in critical digital infrastructure to support the development of payment systems in the region. Thirdly, we believe that Hong Kong support is very crucial for Cambodia in improving its capacities to take advantage of the use of big data, data for improving governance system and to ensure the security and integrity of data and digital system through different forms of assistance like capacity building, financing and technical support. Fourth, Cambodia and Hong Kong should intensify efforts to strengthen its country's regulation mechanism to manage possible risk rising, arising from fast change, changing financial system and maintain 
financial stability. At this, at this time, at the same time, with regard to technological innovation, I believe that we should leverage our cooperation in digital infrastructure and enhance cooperation related to innovation in the aspect of e-commerce, MSMEs, agribusiness, smart city, big data, internet of things, technological exchange, research and development, and human capital development. Agencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by reaffirming Cambodia's commitment to strengthening economic trade and investment relations uh, bilaterally with Hong Kong, China, to enhance and facilitate the business communities. Last but not least, I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome and encourage the business community from Hong Kong to further engage and invest in the field of scientific, technological and innovation, e-commerce, digital economy, infrastructure, agro-business, new energy, and public health in order to help our region achieve the inclusive growth. I wish you all a fruitful discussion during this webinar conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Pekrati. Now we will move on to the thematic sharing sections. Our expert speakers from Hong Kong and Cambodia will share their insights under three respective themes, namely opportunities, challenges, and support for Hong Kong enterprises in going global, Cambodia's latest business and market situation, and sharing by entrepreneurs and professionals. May I first invite Dr. Jonathan Choi, the permanent honorary president of the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce, to share his insights on opportunities, challenges, and support for Hong Kong enterprises in going global. Dr. Choi possesses deep knowledge of Cambodia and other different markets in Southeast Asia. He is now joining us through Zoom. Dr. Choi, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to be here today as the panelist of this webinar of Hong Kong-Cambodia Partnership. To foreign investors, Cambodia has a number of favorable factors, including political and economic stability, using US dollar for business transactions with no foreign exchange control, corporate tax holidays, pro-foreign investment policies, readily available manpower and resources as well as a strategic location in Southeast Asia. It is a member of ASEAN with which Hong Kong has a free trade agreement. Cambodia has transitioned from an agriculture-oriented economy to one based on manufacturing, tourism and services, while its entry into the WTO in 2004 further strengthened trade integration and created trade benefits to foreign investors. It is a market the Hong Kong companies to explore and find opportunities. Taking advantage of Cambodia's investment-friendly environment, my company, Samba Group, has started doing business there since 1995, more than 25 years. We started with seafood operation and trading. In 2010, we moved to property development when the government relaxed its foreign ownership law. Our latest luxurious property development, Sunwa Pearl in Phnom Penh, will begin construction soon. It is in a prime location and will become a landmark in the city. We saw GDP growing around 7% from 1998 to 2019. Making Cambodia one of the fastest growing economies, we have great confidence in Cambodia's development in the future. Apart from doing business, Sunwa has developed projects with various ministries in Cambodia. For instance, we have set up the Cultural Center at the National University of Management in Phnom Penh with an Innovation Center. The Innovation Center will link up with Sunwa's international innovation platform and networks, including Hong Kong, China, Vietnam, and other countries and regions to support Cambodian startup companies and promote innovation among young people. 
Sun Wan's chief representative in Cambodia is the vice chairman of the China, Hong Kong and Macau Business Association of Cambodia and has initiated and organized business, educational and cultural exchanges and networking activities between Hong Kong and Cambodia and received many delegations from Hong Kong. The association has also actively participated in Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, that is GBA, and the Belt and Road Forum and events. As an international capital market and financial center, Hong Kong can assist GBA companies to go global and also help Cambodian companies to expand business to the GBA. The rising market of Cambodia is also an investment market for GBA among ASEAN countries. As the chairman of the Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area Entrepreneur Union in China, I will facilitate connections and cooperation among enterprises in GBA with domestic and international partners, including Cambodia. Hong Kong can play the role of not only the connector, but also the investor and operator. Hong Kong exceptionally qualified to provide all-round support to Cambodia to tap into the GBA market. Hong Kong can also assist mainland Chinese companies to expand the business in Cambodia. Lastly, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the Commerce and Economic Development Bureau of the Hong Kong SAR government and the Ministry of Commerce of Cambodia for bringing such a valuable opportunity for us to share our views. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Next, we have Mr. Nicholas Kwan, Director of Research of the Hong Kong Trade Development Council with us. Mr. Kwan has over 30 years of experience of economic and business research covering key industries and services in Hong Kong, mainland China, and most major and emerging markets, including ASEAN. Mr. Kwan, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> I tried to talk about the importance between Cambodia and Hong Kong, but suddenly find that all those key points are being expressed by our former speakers. So instead of doing repeating the whole first message, I would like to highlight two points which I think for my research career may offer some sort of uh, value added. The two economy, even so very different in size as well as in population, but has one common feature, which is a highly open economy. Both have a trade volume bigger than the GDP. And geographically, we are very close. And with the COVID-19, we now understand that we have to be even closer and work closer with each other, not just to uh, protect our public health, but to develop our economy together. The reason I say that is that starting early this year, Hong Kong and ASEAN Free Trade Agreement has been launching and moving along. Cambodia is a very important part of that agreement for us as being elaborated that we are the second largest investor, direct investor in Cambodia recently. And Hong Kong is the fifth largest market for ASEAN as a whole. And some of the, for some of the markets, we are actually uh, among, um, among the top two or three. So going forward, actually, there will be still a lot of challenges. Uh, I understand Cambodia itself has a post-COVID recovery plan. Same for every country in, uh, in the region as well as in the world. We are looking forward to what a new business partnership we have to build uh, after COVID. I think one thing which we, uh, which we can work very close together is that coming very soon, there will be an even bigger free trade agreement, RCEP, which has been signed and waiting for final approval for uh, uh, partner members. And Hong Kong with two of our biggest trade partners, China, and ASEAN being part of this RCEP. We are looking forward to be joining as well as participating either directly or indirectly in this um, future agreement. And we very much look forward to Cambodia's as well as other ASEAN members support. And for doing so, actually it's not just benefiting for Hong Kong, as we can demonstrate recently that Hong Kong is a platform for business around the region as well as around the world. We support 
business in terms of our common platform or offshore platform in finance, in logistics, in medical, which we are all going to have a summit on Asia Global uh, uh, Asia Summit on Global Health later this month, as well as on uh, finance, Asia Financial Forum each year. And we have been very grateful that um, two of our uh, uh, honored ministers and state secretary of the Minister of Commerce from Cambodia has attended our Belt and Road Summit over the last three years. And hopefully going forward, we can still count on more of the support from Cambodia as well as each other. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kwan. We will now move on to the second thematic sharing section on Cambodia's latest business and market situation. We are pleased to have Mr. Sun Sapal, Director of Public Relations and Promotion of Private Investment, Council for the Development of Cambodia with us today. He is joining us from Cambodia. Mr. Soon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for the floor. I appreciate the opportunity to have uh, the speak after uh, our uh, previous uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Choice, who have uh, immense uh, experience in doing business in Cambodia. He speaks uh, loudly about uh, what Cambodia uh, can offer and appreciate uh, the kind word of Secretary Zhao. And also, uh, I like to join uh, Excellency uh, Peter T uh, to share with you uh, about the uh, Cambodia's investment opportunity. You can find a rising opportunity uh, in Cambodia for your uh, next uh, investment. I, I don't want to uh, prolong or repeat the point that already made uh, by Excellency Petriti, Dr. Choice, and our previous uh, speakers about Cambodia. I just want to introduce to you uh, something uh, you can find why you should uh, choose Cambodia as your next destination. Uh, if I may, I will share my a presentation from here, if possible, because uh, I just want to jump to the other slide that make uh, right away to the point that we could uh, see something new that Cambodia have introduced uh, recently, especially the uh, new investment law that we uh, put in place. Uh, something I want to share with you three important points. Uh, first is a strategic location. Uh, we have specific assets awaiting the uh, investment in Cambodia. Uh, the government adopt a pro-business approach. Uh, this is uh, something that we want uh, to highlight to you. Uh, the uh, Cambodia really uh, strategically located at the center of uh, Southeast Asia, sharing border with uh, Thailand, Vietnam, and Laos. Uh, with these two uh, big agglomerations, uh, Thailand and Vietnam, we want to uh, leverage uh, something that we have uh, to promote a production linkages. We are deeply connected with the regional value chain through the Southern Economic Corridor of the Greater Mekong Subregion. We build uh, this corridor infrastructure to uh, promote a investment in uh, Cambodia. Uh, as you can see, we can attract the investment in the first half of this 2021, uh, increased by almost 40% compared to uh, 2020 at the same time. Um, we adopt a pro uh, business approach, which um, we give a non-discrimination principle. We open our economy, allow foreign investors 
to invest 100% by their own, except only the ownership of the land. I think uh, this point uh, have uh, given us a advantage to work together with the uh, investors and we allow them for free transfer of capital and profits. We introduced a streamlined procedures, uh, one-stop services. We provide incentive and support, and we also give the investment uh, aftercare services. We give a full guarantee under our law. The new investment law is already in place. Uh, the King promulgated uh, last month, the 15th October, uh, that guarantee if to investor, there will be no nationalization, no price control, no expropriation, and we give a full protection of intellectual property. With that guarantee and protection under our investment law is not enough to uh, give comfort to Hong Kong uh, investors, they can uh, invoke the ASEAN Hong Kong investment chapter, which already put in place all the guarantees and the protection. The new investment law that we put in place uh, provides a very smart investment incentive scheme, which uh, we give a income tax exemption uh, from three to nine years from the first revenue. That is much better than the previous uh, law. And the investors that put investment in Cambodia will receive prepayment tax exemption during the income tax uh, exemption. The, this is will give uh, investors uh, to uh, use the uh, revenue uh, from uh, the uh, business operation uh, to do uh, a more activity. They will also receive a minimum tax exemption with the requirement of having independent audit report. If you have that audit, uh, uh, audit report, you, you will get that uh, minimum tax uh, exemption as well. The export tax exemption will also given to uh, the uh, investment project that we use and export. We uh, give a import tax exemption, including the production, uh, construction material, production equipment. We have a construction equipment and also production input for both export investment project and also the domestic uh, qualified investment project. So this is uh, the feature that we uh, give uh, to investors to have import custom duty, special tax and VAT tax at the expense of the state. So this is the investment incentive under our new investment law. Uh, we have a additional uh, incentives uh, providing to uh, QIP, the Qualified Investment Project, uh, with the VAT exemption for purchase of local produced production input, a deduction of 150% from tax base on the expense related to responsible business conduct. If your company uh, put the expense for, let's say, to enhance the productivity in your company by uh, giving transportation, uh, canteen, or other services to the worker, all those expense will be uh, subject to have a tax deduction up to 50, 150%. Uh, the tax exemption on the expansion of the uh, qualified investment projects is also applied. Uh, the previous law did not mention about this uh, tax exemption, but the new uh, will give uh, the uh, investment uh, incentive for expansion project. Uh, we 
further consider to give a special tax incentive. The special tax incentives will be given to the investment project with a specific sector that will have a high potential to contribute to the national economic development. So every year, we going to have a financial management law. So during that financial management law drafting, we will see what kind of the sectors that is really contribute to the national economic development. Then we will put a special tax incentive to uh, those uh, specific sectors. We introduce a very uh, simplified uh, procedures to facilitate investment uh, in Cambodia. The qualified investment project registration will have only one single registration certificate. The previous, we have two, uh, one conditional and the last one is a final uh, registration certificate. So now we have only one single registration certificate, certificate which will give to the investor not more than 20 working days before is 28 working day, class three working day of the conditional certificate. So now we cut down to only uh, 20 working day. The investors can also apply online as Excellency Peter T uh, mentioned in his uh, remark. Uh, the IT platform already putting in place, the QIP online is already there to welcome uh, the application from the uh, investors. And we will also uh, issue the investor certificate for them to uh, get a work permit and employment book uh, as easy as possible. Uh, we will work to strengthen the uh, single uh, window mechanism uh, at the CDC. We will also uh, enhance the a mechanism for review and deciding on the investment project proposal and also introduce a dispute uh, resolution as well. We will have a strengthening the master list approval uh, mechanism, uh, work on the strengthening uh, monitoring mechanism, a joint monitoring, a joint monitoring uh, task force by the relevant ministry. Uh, we don't have uh, a regular uh, or each of the ministry uh, monitoring uh, program, but we have only one, a single uh, monitoring uh, uh, program for the project. This to avoid uh, disturbance to the investors. We establish the aftercare service mechanism in place to uh, facilitate uh, investors uh, in Cambodia. Uh, beyond the fiscal incentive that uh, we put in place, uh, we uh, introduced this. We have a, a one-stop shop e-service channel that investor can uh, register uh, online. We have a master list and master list online for those who uh, ask to bring in the uh, raw material production input, uh, construction uh, material, they can uh, submit applications through the master list online, which we uh, approve faster. Uh, we establish a supplier database uh, to assist foreign investors that uh, looking to procure a local raw material and production input. This is a platform that we put to help investors in Cambodia and hope that uh, Hong Kong investors in the future can use this platform uh, to engage in the business in Cambodia. I would like to uh, stop my presentation here. Uh, just to show you this uh, 
some part of the slide that already mentioned by Excellency uh, Pidati. And this is uh, the uh, slide share with you on the investment flow uh, to Cambodia uh, for the last uh, five years. And this is uh, the map that we uh, build an extensive uh, network of the special economic zone to welcome investors uh, when they want to look for a base location uh, for them to invest in Cambodia. You can use this uh, special economic zone as a location for you in the future, or you can also invest it in uh, the development of the special economic zone itself. So I finished my uh, presentation. I am looking forward uh, to welcome you uh, and uh, discuss with you how Cambodia can uh, facilitate you uh, to invest in Cambodia. Excellency uh, Pedati has uh, informed you that yesterday the government already uh, opened our economy and more than 86% uh, of the population already uh, fully vaccinated and most of them have a, also received a boost uh, dose. Uh, so we might have no longer a problem with the uh, COVID-19 uh, issues here in Cambodia. So we will uh, have this for you to have a peace in mind to invest in Cambodia. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Soon. Next, Mr. Basad Mazari, senior consultant and partner of Basi Consultants and Services Limited will share his insight Mr. Masai and his firm have rich knowledge on strategic asset diversification and management services. Mr. Masai, please. Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Edward Yao, Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Hong Kong SAR. And Mr. Peek Riti, Secretary of State of the Ministry of Commerce. Distinguished participants, representative of business community, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first express my appreciation to the Belt and Road Commission for hosting this timely Hong Kong-Cambodia partnership. I will first go straight to the point, Cambodia engagement with BRI. Second, I will speak on Cambodia's vaccine rollout, which is dra dra dramatically outperforming many developed and, develop, developed and developing nations. Finally, I will briefly talk about Hong Kong and Cambodia partnership in BRI. Cambodia engagement in BRI. Cambodia actively engages with BRI driven from many factors. After President Xi's visit to Cambodia in October 2016, Cambodia has been actively embracing and engaging BRI. From the perspective of Cambodia, the BRI match its development needs by providing an alternative source of development. Cambodia is keen on foreign investment so as to accomplish its national developmental objective and achieve the upper middle income status by 2030 and high income status by 2050. Therefore, BRI presents a golden development opportunity for Cambodia. Pro-business market environment and stable macroeconomic policies allows the kingdom to smoothly engaging in BRI. In the face of such, such late comer amongst ASEAN member states, Cambodia embraces open door economic development policy to facilitate foreign investment. For your information, next year, ASEAN is uh, chairmanship of the ASEAN uh, 2022. Under this strategy, Cambodia rapidly transformed her central planning economy to full-fledged market economy. Furthermore, the government has put in place multiple mechanisms 
to facilitate foreign investors, including new investment law, economic diplomacy, digital economy, and social policy framework, government private sector forum that allows government, foreign investors, and private sector to address any challenges together. In the long run, Cambodia national and regional development plans are integrated with BRI. Nationally, the government implements the rectangular strategy, which is currently in phase four, to support and promote BRI. This policy basket established five cooperation priorities, including policy coordination, facilities connectivity, unimpeded trade, financial integration, and people-to-people -people bond. It is well matched with some priorities in rectangular strategy, such as human resources development, economic diversification, private sector and job market development, and sustainable and inclusive, inclusive development. National Strategic Development Plan 2014 to 2018 and Industrial Development Policy 2015 to 2025 echo the effort in complementary with the BRI. Both national policies aim at transforming Cambodia's industrial structure from a labor-intensive industry to skill-based industry by 2025, linking with the global value chain, integrating into regional production network, strengthening competitiveness, improving productivity and domestic industries, and developing modern technology and knowledge-based industry. In line with the Digital Silk Road, Cambodia government advocate for Industry 4.0 and has a strong focus on developing digital economy, including digital economy and social policy framework and BAKONG. Please, next slide. The next in all-in-one mobile payment system. I think we should go to the next one as well. The BAKONG is a, I think it's a, a slide number four, I believe. Is it BAKONG's there? Uh, Okay, actually this one addressed by the minister himself, but I want to just uh, mention it again because this Bakong is a combined mobile payment and banking includes an e-wallet, mobile payment, online banking and financial application within one easy to use interface for any preferred bank account, which is to me is all in one because I think in, in Cambodia there are a couple of applications for, for e-banking. I think this one in, integrate them together, which is easy to use. I haven't used it yet, but I think I will use it in the future when I'm in Cambodia. Uh, regionally, BRI project that are thriving across the region make supply chain remains resilient. In Cambodia, we have massive BRI project, including Sihonik Will uh, Special Economic Zone, Phnom Penh Sihonik Express Railway, two new international airports in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. These infrastructure projects are processing smoothly and they will certainly contribute to boosting Cambodia's economy recovery. As to the prospect for the Belt and Road Cooperation in our region, allow me to share a few, few thoughts. First, we need to deepen international cooperation and collaboration on vaccine production and distribution in order to make, make it more inclusive and equitable and avoid politicizing the pandemic. Equally important, regional cooperation is imperative to strengthen disease surveillance for further pandemic. Second, can you go to the next slide? Next, next, next. Okay. Uh, second, building a community of shared future of, for mankind is not just a political slogan, but an action-oriented international cooperation that will help us realize the sustainable development goal. Third, we need to sustain an open, inclusive, and rules-based rules multilateral trading and investment system. In this connection, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, will play a crucial role in promoting this including, inclusive and open regionalism and supporting our inclusive and sustainable recovery. Fourth, we need to put more resources in social protection, our prosperity, but instead an investment in our, our people that help promote a more dynamic, inclusive and robust economy. And I believe that is the true spirit behind the Belt and Road Project, while supporting the two initiatives proposed by China on vaccine cooperation and 
On partnership, on green growth, I am optimistic that the Belt and Road Cooperation spirit will continue to deliver on our sustainable development growth for many years to come. Distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen, Cambodia's government clearly understand the needs for investor and entrepreneur alike. That is why government remains strongly committed to ensuring and enabling climate for all investors. As highlighted above, taking this opportunity, I would like to reiterate government's staunch commitment to warmest welcome to all foreign investors, especially those from Hong Kong for choosing Cambodia as a destination to start or expand their business. I also urge business people and investors who have not yet done so with permissible circumstance to come to Cambodia to explore the potential and opportunities. Finally, I wish distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good health, further success, and a fruitful webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masai. After two sharings regarding the topic Cambodia's latest business and market situation, let's now move to the last thematic section. We will have sharing by entrepreneurs and professionals. And to start off with, may we first invite Dr. Ben Lee, founder and chairman of Urban Village and Factory Phnom Penh, to share his business experience in Cambodia. The Urban Village and Factory Phnom Penh is the biggest mixed-use Hong Kong standard development in Cambodia to date. Dr. Lee is also the CFO of the Gold Fame Group, the largest Hong Kong investor in Cambodia. Dr. Lee, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Secretary Yao. Uh, thank you, Excellency. And uh, thank you, all the uh, distinguished uh, uh, speakers. So, uh, uh, so happy like, to have a chance uh, to be here to share uh, the successful story of Golfing uh, Group. So uh, we have been in Cambodia for more than 28 years. So now uh, we are one of the biggest uh, factories in Cambodia. We have over 30,000 workers. Uh, so uh, and we are the global top five uh, niche wares manufacturers. Uh, we manufacture clothes uh, for uh, Sara Group, uh, uh, Interdex Group, uh, Uniqlo, uh, uh, Mark and Spencer, Super Dry, like uh, all these. Uh, I I I I know like most of the uh, uh, audience here like may have my clothes, uh, our family's uh, uh, manufactured clothes in your uh, closet. Yeah. So uh, uh, we have been in Cambodia more than twenty eight years, uh, uh, like more than twenty five years. So uh, uh, we have almost like uh, nine factories uh, in Cambodia. And then now, uh, apart from the uh, manufacturing business, uh, we also uh, engage in uh, real estate business. So uh, uh, five years ago, uh, we, we start up uh, our real estate uh, kingdom uh, in, in Cambodia. Now uh, we are one of the biggest uh, real estate uh, uh, developers uh, in Cambodia. So I just want to, like, in, in this presentation, I just want to tell you why uh, like we have to come, uh, like we have to invest in Cambodia, why we have to uh, start our business in Cambodia. In fact, like before uh, we go to Cambodia, we have been visit many different uh, locations, including North Korea, Bangladesh, uh, Myanmar, uh, uh, like all these uh, places are uh, uh, in ASEAN and in Asia, but like uh, why uh, finally we choose Cambodia like 25 years ago? Like because we, we are uh, we are manufacturers, we definitely need to find a, a place uh, which is uh, uh, very stable in in, in po political stabilities, uh, and then uh, need to find the lowest uh, wages, uh, of course, uh, and then uh, we we need uh, the uh, logistic, uh, and also we need the tax uh, support. So if you look at Cambodia, uh, uh, like we, we got everything here. So uh, like for example, like many people ask us like why you you uh, you put your factory. Uh, not in Bangladesh, uh, not in South uh, North Korea. Uh, why not not in Vietnam? I can tell you that I choose Cambodia all because of like uh, if you look at uh, the stabilities, like if you look at the GDP, you can see like almost like uh, uh, consecutive consecutive nine years of stable growth, almost seven percent growth in GDP. Like for manufacturer like us, like we need a very state, we need a very stable uh, uh, economies uh, to like uh, because because when we. Uh, ship our product. We read, uh, we afraid of the uh, penalty from our 
uh, uh, clients uh, like H&M or uh, uh, Uniqlo, Zara, we, we should be very afraid of the penalty. Uh, if there's a economic stability like in other ASEAN uh, countries, somehow it may uh, create uh, problems uh, uh, for our penalties. So like, uh, uh, so like we choose Cambodia because Cambodia is in the heart of ASEAN. And at the same time, uh, uh, the people, uh, the culture uh, of Cambodians, they are very friendly. And then uh, most importantly, their re uh, religions uh, are, are, are Buddhism. Like compared with other ASEAN countries, uh, they, are, they may have another kind of uh, 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 religious which may need times uh, for their worshipping and uh, uh, other things. Uh, so, so somehow, like uh, Cambodians, uh, 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 the people there are, uh, are humble and easy uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, they're a quick, they're quick learner. So like uh, Cambodia is definitely is the right place uh, for us. And then uh, uh, as the, the Excellency just mentioned about the QIP, QIP uh, is a very important uh, 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 a tax uh, 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 advantage uh, for, uh, uh, for exporter, for manufacturer like us. Like uh, now, uh, we are enjoying QIP uh, uh, for long years. Uh, uh, the QIP, under the QIP scheme, uh, uh, for manufacturers, they pay only zero percent tax, like for more than like five years. So uh, um, this is a great uh, support uh, for for overseas and international uh, uh, export manufacturer. And then, um, so uh, if you look at the uh, uh, population, you can see like uh, Cambodia's got a very nice uh, pyramid shape. You can see like this tri uh, triangle shape. Uh, compared with other uh, uh, countries uh, uh, in the world, you can see like the shape is the most beautiful shape ever. You can see this uh, pyramid, uh, pyramid uh, shape. Uh, so it means like uh, uh, the uh, uh, population, uh, the, the average uh, uh, age, they are just 27 years old, uh, which means uh, uh, like the, they need to uh, uh, get married, they need to uh, 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 consume, they need to buy houses. So you can see like, uh, uh, and most importantly for manufacturers, uh, we need uh, labor force. So definitely, if you look at Cambodia's uh, uh, pyramid, population pyramid is a very uh, nice shape. And then uh, uh, if you uh, look at Cambodia, you can see uh, uh, like they use US dollars as the, as the functional currency. Like uh, for 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 manufacturer like us, uh, like us, uh, like we sign the uh, 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 the the manufacturing agreement uh, with those overseas companies uh, in US dollars. And then at the same time, uh, when we pay for the labor in Cambodia, we pay US dollars. So like uh, somehow it won't be have, uh, a big problems uh, on on the uh, foreign sea, uh, exchange. So if you look at others uh, uh, countries' uh, uh, fluctuation, you can see like the highest uh, the, and the lowest, it could be the like 30%. But if you look at like G uh, US dollars, it won't be a big problem. The GDP, as I just talked about, uh, is a very flat uh, uh, GDP growth of 7%. And then uh, over uh, more than ten, uh, nine years. And then if you look at the uh, Huron uh, uh, global uh, uh, house pricing, you can see uh, that like the the property price uh, in Cambodia it keep on raising like uh, uh, significantly almost sixteen point seven percent growth and if you look at the uh, rental yield based on CPRE report almost like eight percent like uh, 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 rental yield per year and then if you look at like uh, in Great Bay Area the, the uh, rental return rate is just around like one point five one point six per year Hong Kong is around around two point three percent uh, percent per year and then if you look at uh, uh, Bangkok just like two point eight. But if you look at Cambodia, eight percent, like which is really high, and uh, and then uh, and then if you comparing the price uh, uh, along the ASEAN countries, you can see uh, Cambodia's uh, uh, property price is around like in 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 terms of Hong Kong dollars, it's just around like two thousand uh, per square feet, uh, two thousand Hong Kong dollars per square feet. So um, yes, uh, I just want to share like the infrastructure. And uh, you can see uh, 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 Urban Village, like we have built up a, a big startup company. So there's almost 200 uh, startups there. So um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and, and I hope you, uh, you learn a lot uh, from this successful story. And then uh, come to uh, Cambodia and invest here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. We will now invite Mr. Nicholas Chan, Vice Chairman of the Belt and Road Committee of the Law Society of Hong Kong to share his professional experience. With a regional practice covering over 20 countries, Mr. Chen regularly advises governments, NGOs, and private sector clients in the ASEAN and across the globe. 
He is also the vice chairman of EBREM International Online Dispute Resolution Center. Over to you now, Mr. Nicholas Chan. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, good afternoon, uh, friends from online and uh, physically in the audience today. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Yao, um, and also His Excellency. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, so my, my name is Nick Chan. I'm a lawyer with a technology background. I studied computer science, focused in AI, uh, and did law. Uh, and I, I see um, the way uh, um, you know Cambodia uh, rise up in the in the international circle uh, has a lot of similarity in the way uh, China has done the same uh, over the years. My most recent visit to Cambodia was in um, uh, 2019, uh, and at that time, uh, you know, visiting friends there. Uh, you know, catching up with people, uh, I see uh, there's a lot of uh, room that we could contribute uh, in terms of building the infrastructure, and uh, and we can leverage on each other's strengths. So maybe allow me to first talk about professional services, in particular the legal sector in Hong Kong. Perhaps how we can help. So uh, Hong Kong uh, is a small city. Uh, we have um, about you know seven million people, as opposed to uh, seventeen million people over in Cambodia. Um, but uh, we have uh, one of the biggest uh, congregation of law firms uh, in the world. Uh, we have over 900 uh, law firms uh, locally. Uh, we have uh, 84 uh, registered international law firms. And we have uh, lawyers from over 33 jurisdictions around the world. So allowing us to uh, be well placed to assist uh, Cambodian companies uh, as they go out uh, and uh, uh, contribute to the world economy. Um, I would say also uh, from my own experience, uh, it, it felt like um, a lot of the experience Hong Kong based lawyers could assist is in the same way with assist China's opening up in the 80s, 90s, and so on. Um, so uh, I think a lot of lawyers in Hong Kong would be very interested to assist uh, with uh, helping uh, our friends, our lawyers, and business partners in Cambodia uh, to enter into uh, in, in, you know, uh, better treaties uh, and um, close deals and use technology. In Hong Kong, for instance, uh, the Hong Kong government has been very supportive uh, in putting 150 million into uh, eBram, uh, International Online Disputes Resolution Center. It's a deal-making and disputes resolution platform uh, co-founded by the Law Society of Hong Kong and the Bar Association of Hong Kong, AIL. So uh, what we do there is to uh, take advantage of the fact that, like Cambodia, we are a member of the New York Convention. So if you were to enter into contracts, uh, if you enter into a million contracts, uh, statistically, naturally, some uh, might end up in a dispute. So if you are looking for a neutral dispute resolution platform, if you're looking for AI-powered uh, e-translation, uh, look no further. Hong Kong is the place to be. We are building a legal cloud uh, for storage uh, of um, confidential information. Uh, to uh, a bank security grade. Um, so another benefit of uh, using Hong Kong as the arbitration center uh, is because Hong Kong is the only uh, place outside of mainland China where if you started an arbitration in one of the uh, approved uh, dispute resolution centers like Yibram, um, uh, you mentioned earlier, um, you are allowed to go straight to a judge in mainland China to apply for interim relief. So, you know, uh, Hong Kong being the um, second um, most, uh, or, or by, by dollar value, the, the second highest investor um, and supporter of Cambodia, uh, I, I think, you know, part of the money uh, would have came from mainland Chinese businesses. So uh, choose a neutral forum like Hong Kong uh, and uh, select Hong Kong uh, law and dispute resolution in Hong Kong with one of our dispute resolution centers such as Hong Kong IEC, ICC, EBRAM, and so on. Now, Hong Kong is uh, the third most popular arbitration center in the world. And you've heard from other speakers about how we have ranked uh, you know, very high in our freedom index. And our rule of law index uh, is uh, remain at um, you know, the highest. So another thing is, uh, uh, if you look at the 14th five-year plan of our country, uh, there's been a lot of emphasis placed and priority placed in helping Hong Kong to grow and uh, prosper and contribute uh, with uh, rule of law 
and uh, one country, two systems at our core. So I um, would welcome friends, uh, lawyers from Cambodia to come uh, and work with us in Hong Kong. Uh, professional businesses, we are here to serve you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all our speakers for the wonderful and also insightful sharing today. Now, we will move on to the panel discussion. I would like to introduce our moderator for this panel discussion today, Mr. Kassin Lee, Deputy Commissioner for Belt and Road of the Government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Secretary Yao and our speakers on site at the studio in Hong Kong today will share their further insights on how Hong Kong and Cambodia may enhance cooperation in such fields as trade, investment, professional services, as well as in innovation and technology as we devise resilience, recovery and relaunch programs amidst the pandemic. Now, I will hand over the time and also the stage to our moderator, Deputy Commissioner Lee, please. Thank you, Vinci. Welcome to the panel discussions. Today we have the panelists here, from the left to right, Mr. Nicholas Guang, Mr. Bezan Mersai, Secretary Yao, Mr. Nicholas Chan, and Mr. Ben Lee. It is great that we have just now Secretary Rithi, Secretary Yao, and speakers from different sectors sharing their thoughts on Hong Kong-Cambodia partnership with the audience. Um, to kickstart the panel discussions, um, maybe I will just um, um, reiterate that Hong Kong and Cambodia um, are free and open economy, as, as mentioned by a lot of speakers right now. Um, and the topic of RCEP has also been brought up. So um, may I ask the speakers to share the views about what will the future of Hong Kong Cambodia be like after the implementation of RCEP in the next few years? Would it bring more business opportunities to Hong Kong and Cambodia? And how Hong Kong can make use of this opportunity to, um, to expand the business into the region? Um, may I, maybe first, may I invite um, Nicholas Chan who just uh, speak about the professional service to see if uh, he can share any, uh, any uh, experience or thoughts about this point. Thank you very much. Um, well, I would say we would um, be looking forward to closer relationship with um, more of our um, friends from other parts of the world and maybe opening up for mutual recognition of um, professional qualifications. Uh, the Hong Kong Law Society have entered into 37 MOUs with um, law associations around the world, including the um, Bar Association of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Um, so we very much look forward to be contributing. Uh, and, you know, we, we noticed Cambodia had been um, in and out of, you know, the uh, uh, everything but, you know, arms uh, arrangement with the EU. Um, so I, I think it's a natural tendency, therefore, to also look east from Cambodia to work closer with, uh, you know, economies like ours in our country. Uh, so therefore, working uh, with the RCEP framework and Hong Kong soon, hopefully, counting on Secretary Yao, <laughs> uh, to, to join RCEP, I think that will bring, bring plenty of opportunities for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Bethany, uh, you have a huge investment in Cambodia. Yes. Have you ever engaged any Hong Kong professional service providers to provide service there? Yes, of course. Uh, like, uh, what we, is your experience? Yes, uh, we, 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 we use quite lots of like Hong Kong professional service because like, in, in, like, I mean, in ASEAN, uh, if compared in, uh, to Hong Kong, like Hong Kong got lots of like uh, uh, professionals, like which uh, uh, they can get very good advice. Like no matter it's when when the law, like because when we when we do manufacturing uh, in in Cambodia, somehow like uh, we may need to uh, 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 do the contract uh, with Europe and also US at the same time with Japan when we do uh, with Uniqlo and also like somehow like uh, there's not much. Uh, expertise somehow just in in Cambodia so like for those are uh, 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 very importantly like uh, 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 for when, when we finding like, look searching for like legal uh, consultancy uh, definitely uh, Hong Kong will be the first choice uh, this is a must like uh, also like for the accounting service uh, uh, we also use a uh, lot of uh, Hong Kong uh, expertise uh, uh, including the, the big four in Hong Kong uh, for tax uh, and also like for 
for some like uh, double tax arrangement, uh, 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 consultancy services. We all use Hong Kong uh, professional service. So like, well, uh, when, when, when you just talk about the RCEP, I can tell you that like, as a manufacturer, uh, RCEP is so important. Like, because like, if you look at Cambodia itself, like, uh, when, we, when we ship the, the goods all the way from Cambodia uh, to Europe, like now like, most of the products are zero stamp duty. Cambodia to, uh, uh, to US, like some of the product, like for example, handbag, you can see like most of the handbags are now in the world, like for example, Coach, MK, uh, like all these uh, uh, brands, like they're, they're zero stamp duty, like all the way from Cambodia to, uh, to US. Now, after signing up, it can make Cambodia be the only country which can Europe, US, and RCEP, like this is uh, the mode like for manufacturer is a great news. Like you know, like Hong Kong, like uh, like, 20, uh, like not, uh, even now, like most lots of like famous manufacturer uh, uh, in Hong Kong, like in, you know, in the world, most of the famous manufacturer they are mostly from Hong Kong. I can tell you, like in Cambodia, like uh, uh, we are the uh, Mo Sam Dai Wong, like that. There's a uh, like sport uh, king, like uh, uh, Bo Hai Dai Wong. Uh, all, all, all in, in Cambodia. So you can see like RCEP is so important uh, for Cambodia. Mm. Uh, may I invite uh, Mr. Masai to, to speak? Yes, uh, uh, when it comes to actually trade, I, I think we have witnessed the, the uh, of course, since the, the Hong Kong joined the uh, FTA with ASEAN, even within the pandemic, I can see that uh, the trade level has been grown. And I, especially with China, the, actually the amount of trade increased. That shows that the resilience of the actually ASEAN and China and as well as Hong Kong. And I'm sure the RCEP would be actually extending it. In my view, that by, by joining the RCEP by Hong Kong, we're going to further make these uh, uh, supply chain resiliency between China and ASEAN and further to RCEP as a regional a regional uh, for trade would be definitely beneficial. But if when it comes to services, which is my area, my sector, and as uh, the other speakers said, there's lots of room for improvement in Cambodia. I think uh, in legal services, in dispute resolution, in also professional services, including accounting, finance, and also asset management. And of course, when it comes to property sector, I believe uh, is another sector that I see the Hong Kong company can benefit by providing training services because uh, there are lots of building coming up. And I mm -hmm. think they definitely require lots of quality management, which is lacks there. So it means whatever related to services is of huge potential for Hong Kong companies to participate. Um, Mr. Nicholas Guan, yeah. um, talking from, uh, from the perspective of TDC, which has a vast experience of helping companies from Hong Kong to expand into ASEAN and also other countries, um, do you see um, any further opportunities brought about by ASEAN to Hong Kong? Uh, there's definitely a lot. Anyway, I think um, to look at opportunities, we need to put ourselves in the context of what is coming up. Um, and we're definitely facing a lot of difficulties over the years uh, with the global trade environment, social political environment. But out of that, actually, you see how resilient Hong Kong as well as Cambodia is like. Uh, just mentioned about the resilience thing. Uh, I think that two aspects of resilience. Uh, in terms of public health, both places have been doing very well uh, compared with many of the other, even very well developed countries. In terms of economy, Cambodia has proven itself by being the highest growth uh, economy for more than a decade uh, around the world. Hong Kong has also proved ourselves under a very negative environment. We still rank among the top three best performers in trade growth over the last several years. So to put that together, I think RCEP is a platform that we can leverage on. But to leverage on that platform of regional context, you need something more to make it work, which is where Hong Kong can add into. We provide a platform where all the international key services can be assessed from finance to legal to consultancy. And that is where we can put the thing together and where Cambodia and Hong Kong work very close together. As I just mentioned that we need all our ASEAN friends and our ASEAN friends to work with us to get us into ASEAN. But we also want to bring ASEAN to the rest of the world where we have a platform for them to get into the West as well as the developing world. 
And another uh, hot topic now, this is about Greater Bay Area. Um, maybe I, I'll ask you, Mr. Guan. Um, for the Greater Bay Area, how, how would it attract uh, investors from Cambodia to invest through Hong Kong? It's very simple. You think about Greater Bay Area. For us who live in the Greater Bay Area, we may not be aware of that. But for anyone we talk to outside of the Greater Bay Area, when you mention to them that we have an economy or a region highly integrated, with the population size as big as the Germany, with an economy as the size of an, another uh, Korea or Australia, they will bring. And on top of that, this is one of the most open area in this region. And it's not just open, but it is one of the highest growth and on, also on the, one of some of the, uh, the best direction in terms of high tech, in terms of services, uh, high level services. So this is an area where you can see yourself as part of the market, as well as part of the source for funding and all the inputs. So, but I guess that there's still a lot of work we need to do because to bring the Greater Bay Area into the other part of the world, particularly in, the, uh, in East Asia, uh, Hong Kong has a lot of work to do and we want to work with all our ASEAN partners to make it work better uh, between these places as well as the others. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone for the sharing. I'm afraid that uh, it's almost time to close our discussion session today. And may I invite um, uh, Secretary Yao to uh, give a closing remarks. Secretary Yao, the floor you. Thank you, thank you, Kaysen. And I, I must uh, extend my appreciation to all these speakers for giving your insight and also some, some of you giving your personal experience in sort of investing, operating, and developing uh, in Cambodia. You are, in fact, the important bridge uh, in this uh, uh, Hong Kong Cambodia partnership. Now, um, one thing, one thing reinforced my earlier optimism on this partnership is, in fact, from the speakers sort of sharing that you can see that, in fact, we have built up quite a uh, sort of pool of experience, knowledge, and optimism, judging from all you have spoken. That, in fact, Hong Kong's knowledge on Cambodia and vice versa has been deep and wide, right? Uh, when, when we talk about business, I think no one is being spared from a few challenges which is still ahead of us. A, of course, is COVID. Nobody knows when COVID will be over, but I think it requires the entire world to come together. But in this particular area, I think it also opened up tremendous opportunity for a lot of sharing of experience and also in public health or life science or biotech sort of uh, exchanges where I think uh, one would be very willing to share with our sort of uh, uh, close partners and neighbors. And in this regard, I think Hong Kong has accumulated some experience and also our, our sort of uh, uh, bioscience uh, technology is also willing to uh, look at ASEAN as a marketplace and also as a partnership. So in a way, there is a silver lining uh, sort of, uh, behind the cloud. Now, the second unfortunate challenge facing the uh, global economy is, is not from nature, but man-made. It is the protectionism that uh, seemed to have uh, resurfaced only in the last couple of years. In that, I mean the, the trade and non-trade barriers. Very seldom we see in the, in, in the so-called post-war years the coming back of a huge uh, sort of uh, tariff or trade barriers, which has been sort of uh, affecting the trade. But when, when we look back in the last couple of years, despite, say, the trade war on both uh, between the uh, two sides of the Pacific, we're actually seeing the resilience, the word picked up by a number of speakers, that, well, in fact, trade go through the easiest pathway with the least barrier. And that is country where they will impose the least barrier to trade. And I would say that, well, trade is sometimes the solution rather than the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, in that regard, I think Cambodia and Hong Kong are the, are the shiny example whereby we open our economy, we invite sort of investment to come in, we allow trade to go through the, uh, 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 the least sort of restriction. And as a result, we are seeing the mutual benefit for all. We have seen this in the uh, trade goods. And Hong Kong, as, uh, as highlighted by some of the speakers, we are in fact, in the last year, we, we made ourselves the world's number six uh, entity in terms of uh, trade goods, which is an exceptional record-breaking sort of position, contrary to uh, trade barrier that we have seen. Now, of course, I think uh, what I'm looking at is, in fact, a similar sort of a growth in the trade services area. Mm -hmm. 
which I think Hong Kong is well equipped to do so. But for this uh, flourishing trade, both in goods and services to prosper, it can't be just Hong Kong. It must be a partnership. And the best partnership, in addition to our own nation, the mainland of China, must be ASEAN as a group. And I will say that, well, often Cambodia might be a sort of underrepresented at present because, well, among the uh, 10 members of ASEAN, uh, Cambodia, in terms of trade, ranked uh, number seven with Hong Kong. But that also means that, well, there's tremendous potential for this to be strengthened, particularly uh, in the area of services. Mm. And again, that also coincides with the huge sort of confidence and also uh, uh, optimism in your country that you are investing for the future, essential all the infrastructure from airport uh, to port development, transportation, uh, energy. And in this process, I think we are not just talking about sort of putting money in the right place, but also sort of putting in the right perspective, bringing in sustainability, green development. And again, that's an area that Hong Kong can offer in terms of a, a green bond, in terms of a sustainability sort of a, a requirement. Uh, so I think we can be a, 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 a stronger partner in trade in services. Now, uh, but most important of all is, I think uh, the major uh, impetus for this growth in this part of the region come with the uh, the four letter word RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Interesting, Hong Kong is not yet a member of RCEP. Had, had I worked uh, harder a few years ago to uh, sort of uh, advance the FTA with uh, ASEAN, we might have joined RCEP. But having said that, I think uh, today a lot of optimism that, well, even before Hong Kong joins RCEP, there is in, enough sort of uh, support, particularly from ASEAN country for Hong Kong to be a member of RCEP. I have in fact taken the opportunity in the last 12 months or so uh, talking to each and every trade ministers uh, within ASEAN and so far I've received tremendous support. Now and I can see the momentum of RCEP is, is sort of a rapidly sort of a catching up. That very high chance that well majority of RCEP members will be able to ratify uh, this agreement before the end of the year and then that can allow uh, uh, the, the, the group to uh, consider uh, new members' accession uh, in a period of 18 months from the ratification. So Hong Kong is eagerly looking into this. But in the meantime, we are not sort of sparing our, our, our efforts. Uh, immediately after signing FTA with um, ASEAN, the 10 countries in Southeast Asia, we already entered into another FTA with Australia. So making Hong Kong already a partner with 13 members of uh, RCEP among 15. Mm. So, and also the, the optimism that we share uh, signifies that, well, this uh, trade coalition, which at the moment represents one third of the global trade, will soon be emerging to become almost half of global trade. And more important of all is uh, RCEP composed of a lot of like-minded uh, economy, which uh, we all see free trade, uh, and also a uh, sort of free economy being the impetus for our future development. So with all these uh, sort of remarks and uh, encouragement from all the speakers, I think Hong Kong and Cambodia will certainly work hand in hand uh, as we go along uh, in the greater uh, prosperity and inclusive growth for the region uh, in using this strong partnership as the basis to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Secretary Yao. Now may I invite Mr. Soon to say a few words. Mr. Soon Sapal, please. I thank you very much, uh, Excellency House, the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development of Hong Kong Special Administrative uh, Region. Uh, my appreciation to all uh, speakers that speak uh, about Cambodia's exchange, uh, the experience that they already uh, made in Cambodia. Uh, this is uh, a contribution that has promoted Cambodia among uh, business communities in Hong Kong. Uh, we understand that Hong Kong is a hub for the world. Uh, not only just uh, Hong Kong alone, but international business community uh, centers in Hong Kong uh, could hear uh, the message uh, from 
the existing investors in uh, Cambodia uh, that come from Hong Kong. It is indeed a great uh, honor uh, for me to uh, join uh, Excellency uh, Secretary uh, Yao uh, for uh, closing uh, this uh, very important webinar. We know that today webinar has been very fruitful in considering the world facing the unprecedented challenges uh, brought by the COVID-19 pandemic and how we can work together to provide opportunity to each other under the new uh, normal things. As we all know that COVID-19 uh, pandemic has triggered the globalization uh, as a Secretary already mentioned, I think uh, the disruption in many global supply chain uh, give a very limiting to uh, international exchange flow of trade and investment in Cambodia. Uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Hong Kong, uh, especially uh, the um, the Department of uh, Commerce and Economic Development of Hong Kong uh, for having this uh, very uh, lively discussion uh, webinar. Uh, we see uh, many of the uh, experience uh, given by uh, our speakers uh, give a, a very good snapshot of Cambodia uh, in uh, the life that we will uh, work together uh, to provide a, a, a opportunity for a perspective uh, Hong Kong investors in Cambodia. We should uh, pursue to an, of enhanced service to promote and uh, facilitate uh, investment between Hong Kong and Cambodia by creating a favorable environment to have build investor confidence. And this is uh, the commitment that Cambodia already uh, instructed uh, by the top leader as the Council for Development of Cambodia, uh, chaired by Samdaj uh, Dejo, Prime Minister. Uh, he always uh, asked uh, us to uh, be uh, in vigilant to create a, a, a enabling investment environment to welcome uh, investors uh, from every corner of the world. Uh, Cambodia pledged to all uh, investors and entrepreneurs in providing uh, this environment, uh, a favorable environment. Uh, particular, uh, we uh, want to uh, make sure that a regulatory and institutional uh, framework uh, will uh, be uh, a tool uh, to have use in a way uh, that uh, we do uh, more efficient, transparent, accountable, and predictable. Uh, that this uh, idea already uh, incorporated into uh, Cambodian new investment law that promulgated in uh, October 15, uh, 2021. So we feel uh, that a challenge faced by the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic uh, cannot uh, prevent us from doing uh, things together to promote investment and trade. And we believe that we together can turn this critical challenge into a great opportunity to reinforce our fruitful cooperation in the investment uh, promotion and also a facilitation. Uh, trade in general, uh, we uh, welcome uh, all uh, kind of uh, sectors. Uh, we prepare for a resilient recovery for the post-COVID uh, new normal uh, by launching uh, measures, strategy uh, to, to cope with the uh, economic volatility posed by uh, the pandemic itself. Um, in the uh, Opening uh, session, Excellency Piketty uh, uh, informed you about the measure that already uh, taken by Cambodian government that already introduced 
or 10 rounds of release measure to support businesses to stay afloat and primarily assist COVID-19 hit by uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, businesses. The release measures uh, we put in place, including the uh, wage subsidy, cash transfer, tax release, and key financing supports already uh, been in place uh, to support uh, investors. Uh, during our uh, webinar, uh, we hear uh, clearly about the uh, discussion that already reflect uh, the opportunity and challenge and the support uh, that Hong Kong enterprise uh, can uh, use Cambodia as a uh, platform uh, for them uh, to go uh, global. And we prepare ourselves uh, to be with you, to, 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 to help you, to facilitate you, to make you grow here in Cambodia. Um, allow me, before uh, we uh, adjourn our webinar, I would like to invite more business people from Hong Kong and investors to explore uh, further investment opportunities in Cambodia and engage with us if anything we could be of your further assistance. We prepare everything to attract investment and do our best in their work to facilitate you even amid the uh, pandemic. The Council for Development of Cambodia is committed to creating and in enabling investment climate through investment facilitation and aftercare services. In this context, we use a digitalization uh, to help uh, you, as uh, I uh, introduced in my uh, earlier presentation. Uh, this is a strong commitment that we uh, put in place uh, to help uh, Hong Kong business and investment prospers in Cambodia. On this note, I am optimistic that we can face the unprecedented challenges brought by COVID-19 pandemic together and provide opportunity to each other to promote and attract more quality investment. In the end, I look forward to working more closely with all of you to further enhance our investment cooperation, as well as unlock Cambodia, Hong Kong investment potential and wish everyone in this webinar good health and great successes in all your endeavors. I thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Sun Sapal, for your closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, the webinar has now come to a close, and we hope you find today's event a fruitful one. To all distinguished guests and speakers, thank you for your insights, and to everyone, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.